You know what this strange looking creature is? That's right, it's a tadpole. Johnny found it in a pond near his home and brought it to Miss Jones explains to the class that the little tadpole will gradually change its shape and someday will become a full-grown frog. In other words, a tadpole is a baby frog. Tadpoles live underwater, eating and breathing like fishes. Jane wants to know how fishes breathe underwater and how they move about so quickly. In fact, all the children are anxious to learn more about animal life underwater. And so they're going to set up an aquarium. At last, the work is done. The children have covered the bottom of the aquarium with fine gravel and have filled it with clear water. They have also put in some rocks and a few graceful water plants which make the aquarium look more natural and more attractive. Now they are ready for the last step, putting in the water animals that will live in the aquarium. Jack has brought three water snails. Helen has four goldfish. And Fred has two more tadpoles. Wait a minute, Fred. Tadpoles and goldfish don't get along very well together. Sometimes a hungry goldfish will bite a tadpole. Fred has a good idea. Let's put the tadpoles in a separate aquarium. Now the tadpoles are safe, and we can still watch all these little animals and learn how they live. Breathing, eating, moving about, all underwater. Have you ever wondered how the animals that live underwater can breathe? You and I cannot breathe underwater. And yet we, and the fish, and all living animals need the same thing when we breathe. We all need oxygen. Oxygen is all around us. In the water, in the air, and everywhere, even though we cannot see it. When you breathe in, your lungs, which are inside your chest, fill with air from which the oxygen is taken. Instead of lungs to take oxygen directly from the air the way we do, a fish has gills to take the oxygen from the water. A fish is always opening and closing his mouth, but he's not eating and he's not swallowing the water. He's just taking in the water so that he can get oxygen from it. The water goes through the fish's mouth to his gills. His gills take out the oxygen, and then the water comes pouring out of the openings on both sides of his head. A fish cannot breathe in the open air because his gills can take oxygen only from the water. Joan is going to feed the goldfish. Goldfish should be fed not more than three times a week and each time just a tiny pinch of food is enough.
Fish have no arms or legs, but they can move about underwater with the help of their fins. Some of the fins help the fish to go up. Or down. Some fins help it to turn around. And some help it to stay right where it is. But most important of all is the fish's powerful tail that pushes him forward through the water. And here are the tadpoles again in their own aquarium. The tadpole has gills like the fish for taking oxygen out of the water. And he has a strong tail that sends him wriggling through the water. The tiny tadpole doesn't look very much like a frog right now. But as he gets older, many changes will take place in his size and shape. He will grow legs. And as his legs grow longer, his tail seems to get shorter. And he'll gradually lose his gills and will grow lungs instead inside his chest. When this happens, he can no longer breathe underwater but must swim up to the surface in order to breathe the air above the water. And so the tadpole continues to grow and to change. And finally, after many, many weeks, he's changed completely from a tadpole to a frog. While goldfish and tadpoles are good swimmers, a snail cannot swim at all because he has no tail or fins. All he has is one big broad foot with which he creeps on the bottom of the aquarium or on the plants. This is the bottom of the snail's foot as he moves slowly on the glass sides of the aquarium. The snail has two long feelers that wave back and forth and help the snail find his way around as he moves slowly about the aquarium. Snails move so slowly that they cannot run away from their enemies. Instead, the snail has a hard shell on his back which protects him and when frightened, he pulls himself back into his shell. You have learned a few things about animals that live underwater, but of course, there's much more to learn about many more kinds of underwater animals. Animals that live in ponds and lakes, in rivers, and in the sea. Meanwhile, see if you can answer these questions. Why is a fish's mouth always opening and closing? What happens to the tadpole as he gets older? What kind of a suit is this man wearing? And why is he wearing it? <laughs>